Hey y'all, Pops Cooper, livingcooper.com. Today I got a good simple how to for you. Today I'm going to show you guys how to patch and prep this wall to get it ready for new texture or no texture. Basically I'm going to show you how to make this wall a blank fresh wall so that you can make it your own. And to do that, first thing I did was I take this wall off using some painter's tape and drop cloths. That way I don't get joint compound all over the place on the other walls and then when I get ready to texture, that way I don't get overspray on those other walls that are in the room. So after I taped off this, this wall, next thing I did was I patched the hole that was about right here. And you can't even tell it's here anymore. Using a California patch. To do that, I used a scrap piece of sheetrock I had. And if you don't have a scrap piece of sheetrock, you can buy you can buy a patch kit. Or you can buy like a 2x2 two two sheet of sheetrock over at Lowe's or Home Depot. They usually have some small pieces that you can buy like that. So you don't have to buy a full 4x8 sheet. So I used that and then with a utility knife and a putty knife. This is like a 4 inch putty knife. And then also used a 14 inch drywall knife. I used some 3M wall repair fiber reinforced joint compound. Use that. And then you're going to need some kind of sanding. Whether it's sanding blocks like this or sanding screens like this. I use that. Or you could use a technique. I'll show you guys how I use a technique with a sponge and that really knocks down on the dust. If you don't do that, you really need a dust mask so you don't get all that joint compound, sheetrock dust and stuff in your lungs, in your nose. It's, it's nasty stuff. I also used, happened to use a multi-tool like this with a sanding attachment on it. And this sanding attachment, I use that to kind of, you'll see, knock down around it. So, so I did that, got that hole patched up, and then I uh, used my all-purpose joint compound over that hole. And then I also used this wall patch, Freedom Wall Repair Compound and all the little nail holes. So I went and filled in all the little nail holes and I removed any wall anchors. I had one wall anchor that I removed in this one. You'll see, and then I filled those in. And then once I got all those filled in, then I came back with my 14 inch drywall knife and my all purpose joint compound. And I just started skim coating, put about three skim coats, smoothed out after each one so that uh, it would get smoother and smoother. And then the final product, I had a nice clean slate, flat, smooth drywall that was ready to accept whatever new texture. I happen to use this over a knockdown texture, but you could also use it over a orange peel texture or whatever other textures might be on the wall. And then you'll have that wall ready to go so that you can make it your own, put your own texture on there if you want texture or not. Make that wall your own with new texture and new paint. Now, once this wall is prepped and ready for the new texture, you ever check out my other videos. I did a review on the Easy Pro Texture Gun and the Easy Pro Texture Ready Mix and showed you how to do a knockdown texture. And then once I did that, the guys over at Easy Pro Texture contacted me and asked me if I'd do an orange peel video for them. So they sent me some materials and supplies and, and I did a orange peel video, which this wall right here has that orange peel on it. You have to check that video out, show you how to do the orange peel texture and, and paint this wall. So check out those two videos and then let's get started and I'll show you how I patched and prepped this wall. Y'all keep watching. Okay y'all, let's get this started. So the first thing I wanna do before I continue on this texture is I've got to fix this hole that I made. I planned on putting some electrical down here, but things didn't work out because there's actually a wall right here that's in the way and I didn't wanna get into that. So we decided not to do that. So now I gotta fix this hole. So in order to fix this hole, we're gonna do what they call a California patch. And basically a California patch is a, a square that you cut and you'll measure your hole and then you will add an inch to each side and then you'll take a scrap piece and you'll lay it out on here. You'll lay out the larger dimension and the smaller dimension and then you'll cut it and you'll peel the sheetrock off. You'll see as we go along. So what you'll need for this part of the project is a ruler or a measuring tape measure of some sort, maybe a square, a knife, marking device, a drywall knife, and a putty knife, some drywall compound. And this stuff here requires no, no tape. But doing a California patch, you're not going to need tape anyway. A scrap piece of sheetrock. So you'll need some sandpaper and sanding blocks or sanding screens, different grids, things like that to finish it out. Now, I'm going to use this uh, multi-tool with a sanding disc on it because I'm going to be changing the texture on this wall. And to kind of minimize the work, I'm going to kind of take this down, the texture is here. So when I skim coat it, there will be less sanding required on the end product. So let's go ahead and start by measuring our hole and marking out our hole. Y'all keep watching. So first thing we're gonna do is basically add an inch all the way around our hole. So we'll measure out. And this doesn't have to be exact. Okay, so let's take a measurement on the hole itself here. 
and obviously you've got to make your piece that goes in the hole just a smidge smaller than the hole. So my hole it looks like is two and seven eighths here at the bottom and it looks like three at the top. So we'll go with like two and seven eighths as our first width measurement. We'll go with two and seven eighths and then we can kind of shave it off a little bit to, to get to fit in correctly. So it's two and seven eighths in direction. And then for this direction, it looks like maybe three and we'll go with three and three quarters. So we'll do two and seven eighths by three and three quarters. All right, so let's cut our sheetrock out of our piece of scrap. Okay, y'all, so we said that we wanted two and seven eighths by three and three quarter. Let's see if we can find a spot on this piece where we can lay that out. Obviously, I don't want to get these holes in here that I have in here. So probably what I'll do is kind of measure along this bottom here. Now this ruler, by the way, is one inch. So I know, like I said, I want to get one inch all the way around. So with this ruler one inch, then I know that I can mark this and it's at one inch. So we'll start right here and we'll go two and seven eighths and then we will take our square. So we can kind of get this square. It's not going to be exact, but it's going to be close. Then we want three and three quarter. All right, so there's three and three quarter right there. So I need to go to the end of my ruler. Also, I forgot I need to mark off on this outside. So here we go, we got our piece that's gonna go inside the hole is right here. And then we came one inch out around that. So now we need to cut this out. So on this outside line, we wanna cut all the way through. Okay, so I got a piece, a little piece of plywood here that we can cut on. So once you score that a couple times, it'll pop, it'll break just like that. And then you can cut it from the back side. Just like that. So Really, y'all, I kind of cut this wrong. I should have threw all that on the back side, but this is just a small patch that I'm putting in. I'm just going to press forward and, and, and use it. There might be some sheetrock installers or whatever that are going to be like, you can't do that, but that's what I'm going to do. And I also should have extended these lines out here, and I'll show you one in just a minute, just so I can cut a better line. All right, so this time, we're going to make our score. We'll make our scores on here. Okay, so now we got our scores. So we're gonna kind of, we're gonna break this and we're gonna peel off the gypsum off the backer just like this and leave the backer on there. So now we got a piece with the with the flap on it that we're going to place in our hole. So we might have to clean this up, it looks like a little bit. Clean this all up, kind of dry fit it. All right, let's go back over here to the wall and dry fit. Okay, y'all, so now we're gonna dry fit this thing in our hole and see how well it fits. And it looks like we might need to trim, trim it off. So we need to either, either we're gonna have to trim our piece or we're gonna have to trim our hole. Whichever whichever you wanna trim, you can trim. It doesn't really matter. So I need to trim it a little, a little bit. I'm gonna kind of cut my hole a little bit. That way it won't come apart as much as my patch will because this is still held together with paint and everything. So you just take your knife and kind of trim it some. There we go, much better. All right, just like that. Now, I like to kind of rub this down, kind of get the loose gypsum out of there so we get better adhesion. All right, safety first, get the dust mask. And you, like I said, you don't have to do this step. I'm just doing it because in my mind, it's easier to sand all this paint and stuff off and kind of have the patch sit inside a little bit, kind of recessed. And then when I skim coat it, it'll require less sanding around there. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, that's all we need right there. All right, so I, and that's all I was gonna do is kind of get the texture off of it that was on there and then kind of dampen this some, get, the, get all the dust off, that way you get better adhesion. Now we got that damp, so we'll take our, our patch, do the same thing, kind of get it a little moist. Got both those t-shirts, use t-shirt rags. Nana does t-shirt quilts. You have to check out her t-shirt quilt videos that she does. Check those videos out. All right, I think we're about ready to put this patch in place. I'm using this 3M wall repair, and I don't know if they might have it in Amazon. If they do, I'll put a link in for you. But this is just what I have, and we'll see how well it works. It's supposed to be good for drywall and plaster. We'll check it out. Very lightweight compared to some of the other stuff we've used. All right, so we're gonna take our drywall repair compound, and we're gonna put it in just like this. And see how it wants to fall off there? That's one of the reasons why I get all the extra dust off of there, gypsum dust off of there, so this stuff will kind of stick better to it. All right, so that's inside. So now we'll put, put it all the way around. Put this like this. 
Now we'll put a little bit on our patch. Now obviously you probably wouldn't want to do this if, if you were leaving your wall. Since we're going to retake this wall anyways, I'm just going to put some of this on here. So our patch is nice and covered. Then we'll just take our patch and plug it in, just like that. Some people like to put a backer on that patch in there to keep it from pushing in too far. So we got our patch in, and we'll come back and put our joint compound over this. And you might want to try to work it out and to the side like this. Try not to pull into the patch because it'll, it'll come off if you do that. Down here, I'm actually going to come up in it like this because I'm trying to put some compound up underneath there because it's trying to raise up off the wall there. Now, I'm no drywall expert, but I'm just giving you kind of a layman's approach to how I do it. All right, we're going to let that dry for a while, and then we'll come back and do some more. So this looks doesn't look too bad. I'm going to take a sanding block, and this is a, just a medium sanding block. And I'm just going to kind of knock this down a little bit around. Like I said, I'm no drywall expert. I'm just a DIY guy. So we sanded that down a little bit, and then you'll take a, a damp cloth and kind of get the dust off of it. Now, depending on what all you're trying to accomplish here, you may need to add some more, some more skin coats on it, or you may be at the point where you want to put some texture on it. It just depends on how thick your texture is. Like this texture that, that is on this wall, it, it was pretty thick. So if I was going back with this kind of texture, I would go ahead and do my texture now. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and put some more skin on it, I believe. And the reason why is, you want to keep kind of going farther out and farther out, so you can get this kind of feathered out, feathered in with the existing wall. So I used the expensive stuff yesterday, this wall repair, drive five times faster, blah, blah, blah. But for the rest of the wall, I'm just using a all-purpose compound. I'm going to go ahead and put some of that over this again and kind of let this be drying. And then once I do that, I'm going to kind of go over all these screw holes and stuff, start prepping the rest of the wall while, while this is dry. So I got a bigger blade. So we'll take this all-purpose stuff and kind of put it on here. So these streaks happen, you get dry pieces of compound in there and it kind of gets caught up on your blade. It's not the end of the world. So there's that. So we're going to let that dry. And while that's drying, we're going to go ahead and prep the rest of this wall. Okay, y'all. So we're letting our, our patch dry again. And now I'm going to go and I'm going to kind of fill in these little holes. We're going to kind of prep that. And then like this here is an anchor. You can see that anchor. We're going to pull that anchor out. And then up here, we got a big, kind of a, a bigger hole there. We got some globs. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start by let's pull this anchor out. I'm just going to use a, a Phillips screwdriver. And for this type of anchor, there's other types of anchors that you can screw out. And you might have to get a, a drill and a drill bit to kind of drill them off some. So we got that anchor out. Then we're going to take a putty knife and we're going to kind of go over this, like where this glove is right here. We want to get that off, kind of smooth that out as much as we can. So we're going to go over all these holes and stuff, like this big hole up here. We're going to kind of this off and then we'll use some of that joint compound to fill those in. So keep watching, we're going to go over this wall and do this. Now that we kind of patched all of our holes on the wall, we need to cover up this out right here. So we're going to take the face plate off and put some tape on it. Now always be careful if you're working around live circuits, no one get bits. All right, we got that tape, now we're going to take a blade and trim it. Okay, uh, we got a wall prepped, filled in all the little holes, and it's supposed to be a quick dry, quick drying compound. So I think we're good to go there. We got the walls taped off, the floor taped off, and we're going to be using a all-purpose compound for this. We got my knife, got some damp rags to kind of wipe down before I do it, wipe down the dust and stuff. So now what we got to do is skim coat this thing. Keep watching and let's get the skin coat put on this wall. Here we go. Okay, uh, skin coat one is done. Now we're gonna let that dry and come back and use our sanding screen, clean off the, the little ridges and ripples. And then see if we need to touch up any more, what we need to do from there. Right now I'm going to go clean up the tools. It's always good to have clean tools. Keep watching. Come back and the wall is dry. And I don't know how well you can see. I'll get you a close up here in a second. All right, I don't know how well you can see all the little ripples in the wall. At this point, you need to either get out your sanding screen. This is a 120 grit sanding screen. And we're going to go over this and do that. 
You can use a sanding block. Just remember that this thing kicks out a lot of dust when you're using those sanding screens and blocks, so you might need a dust mask. But I'm gonna try something my dad used to do, and I don't know how well it's gonna work, we're gonna see. He used a wet sponge, and that's the way he smoothed his, his tape and mud when he would do sheetrock in their house while they were still there so he wouldn't get dust everywhere. So that's what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna use this damp sponge, wet sponge, not super wet, but can't be super dry either. And I'm just gonna go back and forth over this thing, knock those ripples down, and then once those ripples are knocked down, then we'll go back and put another coat of the all-purpose joint compound on here and smooth it out a little more. And I'll just keep doing this until I get it as smooth as I think it should be. I like to start with a nice flat surface whenever I'm doing this kind of work. All right, keep watching. Now that we got our wall prepped and ready to go, so there you go, y'all. That's how you prep a wall for new paint and texture. Simple, not necessarily easy, kind of labor intensive, but it's it's a simple process. You guys can do it. Hopefully, you learned something today, and hopefully, you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up. If you did, give us a thumbs down. Can't wait. Leave us some comments, good, bad, otherwise. Hopefully, constructive criticisms, things we can do to make this channel better, and. Maybe tips, tricks, or knowledge that you have that can help other people that are watching this video so that they can have a successful makeover of a wall or a room or a house. And check us out on social media, Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter at Living Cooper. And check out our blog over at livingcooper.com. And last but certainly not least, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so you're notified next time we upload a video. And check out our other videos. We've got lots of other types of videos to check out. We appreciate you guys once again. And we'll see you guys on the next one.